So I've been using this for the past six months. Yes, I did unbox this about six months ago. Uh, this is the X1 Extreme Gen 3. It's from the ThinkPad line from Lenovo. And I've been using it as my daily driver ever since I did unbox it. I've been holding off doing my full review on it because I wanted to really put it through its paces and give it a long-term review. And that's exactly what I did. Now the X1 Extreme Gen 3 runs the Intel 10th generation processor. It's an H series processor, a 45 watt CPU paired with the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1650 Ti Max-Q GPU. And I like that combination. We've seen it before, tried and true, and it does work well. You add in 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, you add a terabyte of SSD storage, a lot of ports on this, a great expandability, and this thing has really come through. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my six month review of the ThinkPad X1 Extreme Gen 3. Coming up. And while we take a look at the specs, I want to let everyone know in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Lenovo. I'm not being sponsored by Lenovo. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Lenovo is not getting copy approval. They're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. This review unit was provided by Lenovo. And once this review is done, I'll be sending it back. Pricing starts at $1637.40. Price of my review unit right now on sale at $2405.40. Still not cheap, but definitely a lot off of the initial asking price. For those interested, I'll leave a link in the description below for more information and where you can buy it. Now, I like the way the X1 Extreme looks with its magnesium alloy chassis and the fact that it's really durable having undergone a series of military grade testing. That means this can take a licking and keep on ticking. Now, it also has a pretty good starting weight of 1.7 kilograms or 3.75 pounds for the non-touch model and 1.81 kilograms or 4 pounds for the touch model that I have here. Now, one thing to note, the black with the carbon fiber weave is only available on the 4K panel options only, not on the full HD options, something to be aware of. Now, to put its size into perspective, here it is next to its chief competitor, one of its chief competitors, the Dell XPS 15 9500, and against the Apple MacBook Pro 16. And as you can see, the XPS 15 9500 has a slightly smaller footprint than the X1 Extreme Gen 3. And the X1 Extreme Gen 3 is slightly bigger than the MacBook Pro 16. And here it is next to its smaller sibling, the X1 Nano that I recently reviewed. One big difference between the two, of course, besides the size, is the fact that the X1 Nano has a 16 to 10 aspect ratio, whereas the X1 Extreme has a 16 to 9 aspect ratio. Now, I went over the ports in my unboxing video. For those that didn't see it on the left side, power port, two Thunderbolt 3 ports, HDMI port, and a 3.5 millimeter audio combo jack. Moving over to the right side is a full-size SD card reader. Oh, you got to love that. And you have two USB-A 3.2 Gen 1 ports, as well as a Kensington lock port to round out what I would call a really nice port selection. Now, I opened this laptop up in my unboxing video, but for those that didn't see it, it's very easy. All you need to do is loosen the captive Phillips set screws, pop off the bottom plate, and you're in. Now, once inside, you'll notice that it has two fans for cooling. We'll get into that in a little bit. It also has an 80-watt-hour battery. We'll talk about that in just a little bit as well. Now, as far as what's user-upgradable, you can upgrade the RAM. As you can see, the open RAM slots there, so that's always good. Now, my unit has 32 gigabytes of RAM and that has been working very well. You also have an extra SSD slot in addition to the one they also give you. So that has been working well, as you can see from the reads and writes with the included SSD. Now, one thing to note, the Wi-Fi card is soldered into the motherboard. You won't be able to upgrade it down the road, but the good news is it is Wi-Fi 6 along with Bluetooth 5.1, both working well. Now, I also love the fact that you can get this with optional LTE, although you will have to do it when you do check out because it is not ready. There is no antennas on there already in place if you want to add it later on. So you will have to add that option during checkout, just so you know. 
And one of the things I love about the ThinkPads are its legendary keyboards. And this is no exception. This is an excellent keyboard, especially if you want to get productivity worked on, really good key travel, excellent tactile feedback, and just very comfortable to type on for extended periods of time. It also has a multi-stage backlight, which allows you to get work done in a dark room or a dimly lit environment. Now, the touchpad is a precision touchpad working really well. Two-finger scrolling was buttery smooth, and all the gestures work as you'd expect. And of course, it has the track point, which has been part of the ThinkPad DNA for so many years. Now, I know some people don't like it. Some people do. It's just a matter of personal preference. I find that it works really well, pretty responsive, as well as a great way to navigate through the OS. And I like the fact they include dedicated communication keys, great for Zoom, Skype calls, especially when you're working from home, pretty convenient. And I also love the fact that this is a spill resistant keyboard, which is really great for somebody like me who's constantly spilling coffee or water. At least you have a fighting chance for this keyboard to survive. I like that. Now, there are four display options when you check out. There are two full HD options and two 4K options. My review unit has the OLED 4K touchscreen option. To me, the star of the show has to be the display. It's an OLED display, which I'm a huge fan of. I love it. It's got the really deep blacks, the very vibrant colors that just pop off the display. With a resolution of 3840 by 2160, everything looks pretty amazing. And it's pretty bright as well at 412 nits. You can use it in both indoor and outdoor use. It doesn't really have a lot of glare or reflections, which you really got to love. Now, it has pretty good white points. It has excellent contrast, of course, a hallmark of an OLED display and it has a low delta e score of 1.65 making it a very color accurate display it also covers the color gamut extremely well 100 srgb 96 percent adobe rgb 98 percent of the dci p3 wide color gamut and 94 percent ntsc making this an excellent choice for content creators that do lightroom photoshop and of course video editing now this oled display is also a touch display and it was very responsive working very well now, one change I would love to see in the Gen 4 is a move to a 16 to 10 aspect ratio. Now, this has a 16 to 9 aspect ratio, which is optimized for watching media, watching Netflix, Amazon, and YouTube is simply amazing on this OLED display. But a move to a 16 to 10 aspect ratio would be consistent with the X1 line, as we see with the X1 Nano, X1 Carbon Gen 9, and X1 Yoga Gen 6. And while we're at it, I'd like to see a smaller top and bottom bezel. It's a little bit thick for my liking. So this is the front-facing camera on the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Extreme Gen 3. It's a 720p, 30 frames per second webcam. It's an infrared webcam. That means you can log in with face recognition with Windows Hello. I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comments section below. Good for Skype, good for Zoom. I want to know. And as I mentioned in the unboxing video, there is a shutter switch to turn off the webcam for more security and privacy. You got to love it. And there's also a fingerprint scanner that really worked well, registering my finger each and every time. It worked fast. It worked well. The X1 Extreme Gen 3 sports two bottom-facing speakers, the Dolby Atmos speakers, and they actually sound really good, but I don't think it's quite as good as the Dell XPS 15 or the MacBook Pro 16. Let's give it a listen and let me know what you think about it in the comment section below. Which one did you like better?
Okay, let's talk battery life. And the X1 Extreme Gen 3 sports an 80 watt hour battery, and it did seven hours and 46 minutes on my continuous web surfing test over Wi Fi at 150 nits. That was not quite as good as the XPS 15, which did 12 hours and 20 minutes, or the Apple MacBook Pro 16, which outlasted them all at 18 hours and 40 minutes. That's actually really good. Now it does come with a 135 watt power adapter which supports rapid charge and it'll give you a full charge in a little bit less than two hours, not too bad. Now I was expecting good performance over the past six months, it didn't disappoint with the 10th generation Core i7-10850H paired with the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1650Ti Max-Q along with 32 gigabytes of RAM and one terabyte of SSD storage. Now, when it comes to performance, it did well, and the PC Mark 10 is a good indicator of everyday use, scoring 5198, which was better than the Dell XPS 15, which came in at 4868, running the same CPU. So that's good. Performance for productivity work, such as Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, all worked well with this combination between CPU and GPU, and there is no complaints on that front, of course. And consuming media, watching Netflix, Amazon, and YouTube has been excellent, especially with that OLED display. Now, of course, this is not a gaming laptop, but it's definitely capable of playing games on certain settings. Now, I found the sweet spot to be 1080p high settings. Witcher 3, Far Cry 5, Dota 2, FIFA 21 all had very playable frame rates. Cyberpunk 2077, not so much. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this has two fans for cooling, and when this laptop is under heavy load, you will notice those fans as they do get pretty loud when they kick in. That's actually louder than last year's Gen 2, something to keep in mind. And one of the reasons they did go this route is they wanted to maintain good performance, and I didn't really notice any significant thermal throttling, maintaining good speeds throughout the heavy load. Okay, let's bring it all home. What do I think about the ThinkPad X1 Extreme Gen 3 six months later? Has it held up? Has it stood the test of time as I've been using this as my daily driver for those six months? And the answer is absolutely very impressive performance out of this laptop, especially with that CPU and GPU combination. I am looking forward to what Gen 4 has to offer, especially if they do move to a 16 to 10 aspect ratio, which I think would be better for productivity work. And especially if they can get an OLED display on that 16 to 10 would be even better well that remains to be seen of course i like the optional lte i love the legendary keyboard on this it's worked really well i love its excellent port selection that really has not disappointed especially in the inclusion of a full-size sd card reader and as a content creator i certainly appreciate that and I love the fact that the RAM and SSD are user upgradable. You can outfit this with up to 64 gigabytes of ram and up to four terabytes of ssd storage now, the biggest negative to me has been the loud fans, especially under heavy load. You will notice those fans. It's not a quiet experience. And for those that are looking for a quiet laptop experience, especially when you want to do productivity work, those fans may be an issue. So that's something to keep in mind. But there is a quiet mode as this does have intelligent cooling. So that may be an option if you want a more quiet experience, but you might sacrifice a little bit of performance as a result. I'm going to give this a score of 90%, making the X1 Extreme Gen 3 worth your money. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.